First of all, I would like to express my profound thanks to the organizing committee. Actually, the presentation will be based on the NEMO concept. This is a collaborative effort. I am the presenter. I'm Ioannis Kokliuras from the Hellenic Telecommunications Organization in Greece, active member of the Deutsche Telekom Group of Companies and head here of uh, uh, the Fixed Network R&D Program section. Next slide. Just an overview before passing to details. NEMO project, a three years uh, duration project. We have 26 partners for nine European countries. We have eight use cases, as we, we will see during the presentation. The most important here is that we have a representation from various market uh, sectors, including academia, uh, large industries, uh, telecom operators, SMEs, research uh, uh, institutions, and so on. Next slide. Just an overview of the various uh, context uh, of my presentation. So we start with the introductory content. The next slide. Next slide. Okay. We have several challenges to deal with. First of all, the rapid ex expansion of the Internet of Things, together with uh, the deployment of 5G or beyond 5G infrastructure, which creates a new environment. Also, the deployment of interconnected things under a broader perspective, which affects a multiplicity of market sector and creates a lot of opportunities for development. In parallel, we have the consideration of uh, the artificial intelligence of things, AIoT, which affects uh, the above uh, considerations. However, in the scope of this transformation, we have also several challenges, in particular regarding the provision of real-time, secure and trusted support from edge cloud systems coupled with uh, artificial intelligence. So continuing our discussion, next slide for the information. The NEMO project comes here. It proposes a dedicated platform for the uh, uh, inclusion of uh, on-device intelligence to enable AIoT. In, uh, in particular, NEMO aims to optimize task migration securely and providing a timely orchestration of microservices. In this context, the project acknowledges the necessity for high penetration of IoT applications. And uh, this may affect the broader market sector, especially SMEs and AIoT developers. And uh, a most important feature of our effort is that we are not uh, coming from uh, uh, zero point. However, we consider existing ecosystems like Eclipse IoT and Gaia X in order to support uh, transition towards the AIoT era. Next slide, please. Now it is time to see some features of uh, the NEMO conceptual approach. Next slide. The view. The AIoT is a big challenge, as I mentioned before, not only for the economic growth, but also for social changes. The context coming from the NEMO project is that uh, fully distributed compute in the federation between heterogeneous IoT edge and cloud nodes introduce uh, several cybersecurity concerns. Actually, there is no standard method to describe a cybersecurity issue. There are a lot of uh, self-healing methods uh, and uh, uh, solutions, approaches uh, to take into account. And in particular, diversity of the equipment and protocols in uh, the communication together with uh, the control of IoT uh, and the lack of interoperability uh, result to obstacles for establishing secure communications. Next slide. So here comes uh, the uh, scope of the NEMO concept, aiming to establish uh, as the game changers in the new AIoT edge cloud computing continuum via the introduction of an open source, leveraging on existing technologies, and also by introducing novel concepts that uh, will be affected uh, uh, by market concerns and will offer new opportunities to the market. So uh, the penetration uh, and, uh, of the project uh, accepts to uh, be uh, in uh, parallel with new technologies, also to create uh, pre-commercial exploitation components and uh, liaisons with other uh, uh, communities, especially those related to open source. Next, now it's time to discuss the architecture and the related technologies. First of all, just to see where we stand, actually, uh, the NEMO uh, consider a collaboration among various uh, functional architecture models, like those listed here, IoT for clusters, far and near edge clouds, and many more, and follows a flexible collaboration model with a new generation AIoT nodes. 
so that uh, to support uh, functionality in a semi-autonomous mode and uh, in particular uh, focuses upon reduction of latency and performing a number of uh, complex operations. So the use of uh, local AI models like federated machine learning, deep reinforcement learning and trans transfer learning are also essential parts uh, in order to reduce latency in our approach. Next slide, please. So here, uh, the project uh, considers uh, that uh, IoT devices may get support from various uh, modules of uh, the underlying infrastructure. And uh, during offline training, the federated machine learning models will be aggregated at the next node. Inter-distributed ledger technology transactions and the smart contracts will be facilitated by trusted edge nodes. And uh, this is mainly uh, uh, the core uh, uh, issue of uh, the meta-operating uh, system architecture proposed by the NEMO concept. Next slide, just to see how we propose. Okay, actually, we, we cannot see in detail uh, all uh, layers. We have three uh, separate layers and we have uh, three vertical layers. Unfortunately, I have prepared uh, a PowerPoint presentation with some effects here. The PDF version practically uh, does not allow to see the entire set, but uh, this will be uh, disposed to, to everybody among the participants. So we pass to the next slide just to see the first uh, uh, layer, which is uh, uh, the underlying uh, technology layer. Here we have, uh, next slide, uh, a challenge in order to realize a transparent network con con connectivity, taking into account existing uh, network optimization functions, also coming from 5G or beyond 5G or 6G infrastructure and uh, also dynamic allocation of self-aware resources. The aim is to offer an ad hoc opportunistic cloud and zero de uh, delay uh, fail back by design. How we are doing this? By the introduction of a meta network cluster controller. This is one of the innovations of the, process, of the project, able to interface uh, various tools and protocols and also replacing one technology with the other. So some specific actions here that must be mentioned is the fact that we consider uh, existing uh, options like the Eclipse uh, Xenonet and the HOSM. And uh, we ex experiment with uh, full microservices isolation. Also, we consider an important part existing interface monitoring tools like the Prometheus, Thanos, CNCF and network management tools which is quite important for, for, uh, for the project because we take into account existing development knowledge and we try to, to proceed some steps further. Next slide. Then we passed uh, in general to the next layer, which is the NEMO kernel. And here we have several challenges. Next slide. Here, for example, uh, one challenge is to offer the NEMO core functionality. This is... Uh, achieved by the introduction of an IA-based meta-orchestrator able to perform all uh, options uh, mentioned here, that is, reconfigure the meta-operating system setup, a low end to end federation, and match application service level objectives and related policies. This is also considers existing platforms and orchestrators like Docker, Kubernetes, Minikube, and so on. So once again, we consider existing uh, knowledge in order to uh, re-render microservice and unikernels and uh, also support secure and transparent migration of virtual machines between federated data centers. Another challenge in the next slide is to offer security by design. Here we introduce uh, what we call a secure execution environment to implement the operational task and allow the use of the state of the art uh, uh, in, in our approach. Uh, we expect uh, that uh, this uh, SE will manage the complete microservice like cycle. Next slide. In the same layer, one, one other challenge is about the support of uh, data sovereignty space. Here we introduce a federated data sovereignty space to allow uh, options to follow the GAIA-X approach and adapt some of the emerging SSI technologies. 
Here, it is important to notice that we consider findings from uh, ongoing European projects like Sophie and Phoenix to use in our approach. Next slide. And then we pass uh, in the scope of our architecture to the next layer. Next slide. Here, the aim is to develop a Dev DevZeroOps platform as a service. Uh, actually, uh, we develop a flexible plugin and applications lifecycle manager. We interface ex external plugins and microservices catalogs based on uh, the Guy X concept and also on the Sonata project to offer a living collection of functionalities. And here the aim is to offer intent migration as a service. Next slide. We consider three vertical layers. Next slide. These are briefly presented here. Actually, the aim is to provide the broader support of all uh, M. OS activities. We have the Cyber Secure Federated MLOps uh, layer, the press, which is a very important one. Uh, it's about privacy, data protection, ethics, security, and societal, which uh, allow us to uh, apply and test uh, existing policies. And the final one, uh, the layer, is about cyber security and unified federated access control, which uh, practically offers uh, cloud native uh, cyber security among other issues next slide okay in the four remaining minutes i will pass very quickly this is an important slide uh, i prefer to have a sequence of uh, slides just to give you an idea of what we intend to do uh, these use cases could be a separate presentation we have several pilots several verticals as we will see in next slide First of all, the first pilot, which is about spark farming in Greece, we have two use cases, aerial and terrestrial precision biospraying. Here, what we have to keep in mind is that we combine uh, multiple types of uh, uh, stations, agri-drones, semi-autonomous robots, and uh, wearable devices. In the first case, we can use uh, drones. In the second case, we can use robots in order to support uh, uh, smart farming applications. Next pilot in Italy. It's about um, uh, smart energy and smart mobility. Actually, the smart energy intends to optimize grid uh, operations. We use AI and machine learning uh, analytics uh, in order to reduce impact on the grid. The smart mobility city is the second application where we intend to uh, improve uh, renewable energy sources uh, load balancing via electrical vehicles and predict traffic flows and parking prediction. The next one in Germany, a very important one, is uh, related to the industry of the fourth generation. Here we have two use cases, the fully automated indoor logistics supply chain, which target advanced driver assistance system manufacturing, a very important industrial use case. And the second one, which is uh, the human center indoor uh, factory environment safety, which provides a high precision automated guide vehicle localization layer. The next uh, final pilot, which uh, is also taking place in Greece, we have uh, the combination of multiple heterogeneous smart wearables. And uh, we have the round of Athens race where we intend to collect content and then this content will be processed and uh, rendered uh, uh, by using AI and machine learning models uh, and create a sort of interactivity between the participants. And uh, the next uh, uh, use case is about extended uh, reality uh, environments. Uh, uh, actually, we want to create an environment to enable multiple users to interact with virtual or augmented uh, uh, extended reality worlds already done in other applications, but also in our case. And as I said, uh, I prefer instead of having just one slide, just to give an overview of uh, these flavors, because uh, it is quite important for the industrial sector. And then it's time to conclude. We pass to the next uh, slide, the next one. Uh, some, let's say, remarks online in, in device intelligence to enable AOT. Uh, inclusion, transparent IoT to edge to cloud continuum approach, intent-based dev zero ops tools, as I mentioned in my presentation regarding the architecture, massive IoT applications, high penetration in the market. Next one, just an idea. 
The first one, technological innovations, uh, has uh, been covered in the discussion of uh, the architecture with uh, the introduction of uh, several uh, innovations. Uh, it is also strongly related to the European competitiveness because uh, some of our features uh, intend to uh, support uh, uh, initiatives promoted by the European Commission. And it is important to notice that in our scope of impact, uh, we have uh, expectations for technical, economical, environmental, and social innovation. Next one, and I'm finalizing practically. So there are many opportunities massive IoT deployment in diverse operational environments, the diversity I mentioned, I mentioned support of smart applications and uh, assurance of privacy, especially via the SIE uh, uh, module, on-demand IoT and 5G uh, hybrid clouds with high availability and flexibility, cybersecurity and uh, privacy in, in various tasks, and engagement of communities and ecosystems to enable sustainability. Next one, and I'm finalizing. This is practically the uh, the view of uh, the NEMO project. From today's IoT Edge systems to the next generation IAOT Edge Cloud Continuum, uh, various use cases and uh, related open calls, the technical innovations mainly originating from the architecture of the project. And what is the most important, at least from my point of view, is the fact that we have a multiplicity of uh, actors coming from various sectors of the market, like cloud providers, operators, end users, technology providers, digital innovation hubs, standardization organizations, and many more. And we expect that in the continuity of the project, uh, we will have the uh, opportunity to, to provide uh, more results. And the next slide, just to conclude, Thank you for your presentations. I tried to cover all informations in case we may have any any request, any any comment, uh, even after the event. Uh, I'm at your full availability. Thank you, Thank Philip. You. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any questions? Yes. Short question. I understand that performance is the key factor for your meta operating system. What about energy? I mean, I see a very important challenge moving intelligence to the to the nodes when we know that today's AI and machine learning algorithms are especially hungry in terms of... Yes, uh, this is a good point. Uh, energy uh, consumption is also among the high priorities of the system. Actually, we support in our impact uh, the green concept uh, where we intend to uh, reduce, uh, uh, let's say, um, consumption of energy and uh, uh, this will also affect uh, uh, the development of uh, uh, and the inclusion of our applications in uh, in the market sector and uh, uh, this is a very important issue uh, maybe i should have provided more uh, details on that but it is correct and it, it is also among the high priorities of the project exactly because uh, it's a key issue if we want all these uh, uh, innovations and uh, applications, especially in the various pilots, in the various use cases, to to become adoptable in the market, uh, we must uh, provide solutions for for energy co consumption as well. This is correct. Yes. Yeah, I think I would like to expand on the question about it. It's become a burning issue uh, on on IoT because of the number of devices and the energy and the carbon footprint. Uh, what we want to promote in the innovation is, on the one hand, to have some energy aware computing so if you put more computing capacity and you do the programming that you have a bit of a notion you know what does it mean for the energy consumption and second is uh, energy aware computing and the second is to have sort of uh, include some flexibility can i shift some workload to previous way i have uh, a lot of energy available so flexibility awareness and uh, energy awareness. this is correct and uh... As I mentioned uh, in my uh, introduction, as we are also intending to, to consider uh, 5G uh, infrastructure and beyond 5G infrastructure, these are also concerns because I'm coming from uh, the network operator's point of view. Uh, uh, this is uh, quite important uh, to ensure that uh, uh, energy consumption is reduced, not only to have uh, 
better uh, reduction of la uh, latency and uh, better, let's say, uh, performance, but uh, uh, the energy point of view remains critical uh, for, for the applicability. That's correct. I also want to add the fact that if we look at carbon, carbon footprint, we cannot treat energy as fungible. So you have to know where the energy comes from, because uh, consuming a little more renewable energy, in fact, we're consuming less uh, more renewable energy. I know that there is some research, uh, uh, I am familiar with some work with data actually, uh, about green routing. Mm -hmm. So theoretically, if the network has enough metadata so that you can know where the energy condition comes from, they showed in some simulation that they tried to route uh, on, a, on a geographic area the packets uh, to uh, the, the, the links that have uh, the least carbon. And this is something that I, guess, uh, I, I may say, uh, from let's say, from the practical point of view, some of the pilots, uh, like the second pilot in Italy, which is related to uh, uh, the effective uh, use of the grid. Uh, uh, here also in the smart farming, uh, but more in Italy, we we look for options there in order to, to reduce the energy consumption. And uh, in these, uh, in the related two use cases, it may be more evident compared to the other ones. But uh, in principle, this is correct, uh, and I fully agree that uh, uh, this uh, sort of challenge uh, must also be uh, a high priority, a pillar of the core architecture of the meta operating system as a whole, uh, as I tried to, to, to present, that, that is correct. Otherwise, there will be not uh, any expected applicability as we expect at least.